And now, Chief Meteorologist Chad Merrill with your full seven-day forecast. And a good Saturday evening, everyone. It is cold, and we are going to continue that through tomorrow morning before the temperatures start to rise. We are right now at 8 degrees. We'll fall another degree. The reason we're not tumbling tonight is because we have clouds and just a couple of flurries, but the wind chill up to 10 degrees below Fahrenheit. That's why the wind chill advisory is in effect. You wake up to lots of clouds, but after 1 o'clock, that's the turning point in our pattern. Finally, some sunshine and temperatures in the lower 20s. Right now, 8 degrees out in Summersville, 7 in Oak Hill and Pipe Stem, 5 degrees in Bluefield. And then our wind chills, even though we have a howling wind, when you even have a light wind at those temperatures, the wind chill is exponentially colder. That's why it feels like 3 below in Oak Hill and 11 below in Beckley and 14 below right now in Bluefield. With our surface temperatures and likely pavement temperatures below that critical 15 degree point, when the road salt really stops being beneficial, some of this glaze that you see is probably ice. This is Route 19 at Glen Jean. So take it easy as you go out and about. Even though the roads were wet earlier because we had a few rays of sun, we've lost the sun and we do expect a couple of icy patches. Now, on the correlation coefficient, showing up a couple of flurries, this radar product does that pretty well, but we're not expecting any accumulation because we have this high pressure which is finally starting to set into the Midwest. And you can see our stratus deck across the region. It's cloudy, that's why our temperatures are going to stay where they are, but as this high moves east, it'll push the drier air in. We will finally see sunshine tomorrow. Three below right now in Kansas City, seven above in Chicago. The brunt of this cold air moves in tonight and off to the west, it is actually warmer in Great Falls than it is around here. That's a sign that we are finally getting rid of this Arctic air mass. Bright sunshine tomorrow afternoon, a thick frost on your car Monday morning. And then once we get into Tuesday, we're going to have some patchy freezing drizzle as a warm front pushes through. That warm front pushes through and then we have a soggy stretch of weather Wednesday and Thursday. Not snow this time, but rain. So the weather impacts going forward. There will be a high threat for flooding, which I'll talk about soon, icy patches, and also dense fog in the Greenbrier Valley. That will be Tuesday and a Wednesday. Seven day forecast, 21 degrees on Sunday, 40 degrees on Monday after that frost. It'll be a gorgeous afternoon. Some patchy freezing drizzle on Tuesday, light rain on Wednesday, but there will be dense fog in the Greenbrier Valley. A couple of showers Thursday and then Friday morning. Now speaking of the rain that we are going to get, when you compact that, when you combine that with the snow, there is a threat for flooding and, and here's a little bit more about that. Well, we are dealing with the aftermath of a winter storm. Check it out, folks. Piney Creek behind me, pretty healthy. When you combine a warm up and rain in the forecast, yes, there's a potential for flooding. Let's check it out. Eight to 12 inches of snow is across the region. That's the snowpack. In that snowpack, we have a half to two inches of water equivalent. Now, antecedent conditions leading up to flooding across the region in the wintertime do include that snow followed by rain. As a matter of fact, as we take a look at some of these crests that have occurred, the Meadow River in Nowlin was one of those. Back in February of 2010, there was four inches of snow followed by an inch of rain a couple of days later. Here in Raleigh County at Piney Creek, there was 11 inches of snow in the ground followed by 3.6 inches of rain, so a judicious amount of rain in March of 2010, and that's when the highest crest of 11.47 feet occurred. Same with the Kanawha River, Kanawha Falls, following the blizzard of 96. There was 15 inches of snow on the ground, and then six days later, an inch of rain. And the second highest crest at the New River at Thurmond, well, there was two inches of snow, but six days later, there was two inches of rain, and that month, January of 2013, saw 1.6 inches above average precipitation. So it was already a wet winter. And then February 1st, boom, the river did flood. The current conditions in our region, well, there's again, almost two inches of water in this snowpack. We're expecting an inch of rain late Wednesday into midday Friday, and we've already had a wet January. So going forward, we are going to closely monitor the flooding threat through the middle and later part of next week. Chief Meteorologist Chad Merrill for Newswatch.